this a quick video. I've noticed here lately, especially with this 9-23-2017, uh, I'm going to say loosely prophecy. Well, prophecy, I don't know it's from who, but anyway, you see a lot of numbers. Now they're looking at the feasts, and in the previous video I showed you on the feasts. God's not real fond of those. Uh, but they're, they're just adding numbers to everything, and then they're telling you this number means this, and this number means that. And you cannot have free will and fate. The two don't work together. So you either have free will or you have fate. Same goes with Christianity. You can't have that and numerologies. Now, I don't know these websites, but right here, this, this guy here, he goes across it and he says, it's horrible when I see preachers going down an occult numerology highway. And he goes through and names a few. And some of them are very popular people. Uh, one or two I actually know. Um, but as you want to find out, it is you look and see, and there again, you've got to go back and you've got to know uh, what is the difference in Judaism and the Hebrew religion. There is a difference. Judaism was a fairly new religion, and they do. That, I mean, Aleister Al Crowley even named one of his books the Jamantra. So, you know, the Cabal describes the basics of numerology. It's, this is an occult thing. It's not a Christian thing. Yeah, you, know, you go through and, and they're trying to put numbers on everything. And what's really blew my mind and sometimes it's even people that I've got to really say I'm shocked by. And I looked down through here earlier. And this one is to tell them the truth. Uh, there may be others, but I don't see. I haven't watched every video. I'm not going to waste my time watching videos that are completely wrong. I hear this doesn't surprise me. Dr. Jeremiah. Uh, you see, this dude here, he's, wherever he is, he's in a suit here. Up here, he's dressed in a Jewish garb. Now, that's also mentioned in the Bible. And that's also not a good thing. Uh, I was even surprised to see Trey do this. Uh, that probably sort of really surprised me. Now, Israel is behind most of the people that you see. They rise up and they rise fast. They stay high. They stay tall. That is not a good thing, folks. You can believe it or you cannot. That's just not a good thing. I mean, you basically boil it down to numerology and the occult. You hear a lot of people go over these, all these numbers, these events, this, that, and the other. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of sad, but now this is actually accurate. You go through here, the number three, this is the first sacred number with the infinite repeating pattern in numerology. It is a perfect number representing the pagan trinity. Notice it doesn't say Christian. It is geometrically represented by the triangle. What is the... Uh, Seal of Solomon, it's a triangle up and a triangle down, as is above, so is below. The pyramid and spirituality of the third eye. Again, the third eye is a piano, piano, piano gland, and it allegedly, if you can open it up, you can see into the next dimension, maybe two or three dimensions, I don't know. Sacred numbers are intensified when grouped. 33 is a very powerful number to a cultist. There are three, 33 degrees in Freemasonry, which symbolizes Kundalini, I think it's called, or Serpent Force, which is directed up from the 33 sections of the vertebra to achieve illumination. The number 666 is achieved when three groups of three are added together. 
Uh, number five represents female energy, largely important because there are five days in the woman's fertility cycle. Five is represented by ge geometrically as the pentagram, Isis, and a divine portion. Five is also a planet, I believe it's Saturn which is kind of like a long version of Satan. Number six represents a male energy, the soul of a man, and the macronism of God. Six is represented geometrically as a hexagram. And we've all seen those. Number seven. Seven is a sacred number of the number of perfected man. No such thing. But it sounds appealing. The biblical number of of the mark of Cain. Multiplications of seven, perfect, three times seven equals 21, blackjack or the devil. Number nine, kind of freaks me out on the name of my website. Anyway, number nine is sacred in the cube of three. 999 is 666 inverted. Number 11, now think back. You got nine and you got 11. Think of those two numbers together. Big day in history. 11 is the master number, 10 is the perfect number of God, and 11 represents God exceeded Antichrist. 11 should not be broken down, and it is a master vibration. However, when broken down, 1 plus 1 equals 2, it represents the two of duality. 11 can represent sin, transgression, peril. The number of 11 is the essence of all that is sinful, harmful, and imperfect. I'll also add to that, that 11 is your last hour for redemption. Uh, I forget what before I read that, but anyway. Number 13, number 13 is a sacred number. In sacred geometry, 13 circles were used to create the ancient shape, the flower of life. Now, we've all seen that on Jewish sites, and we've all seen that on Christian sites lately. 13 represents death and rebirth. 13 can also represent the rebellion against God's authority. 13 is a very important number to the brotherhood and was not intended to be used by the profane, hence the superstitions around 13 we are taught in culture. It's our number. It's not for you, Goyim. Goyim is a Gentile. Goyim is actually anything that's not a Jew. That's the terminology it's not a it's not a slant it's not meant to be a smack in the face but the way the Jewish people see it is you have Jewish and you have Goyims. Goy is short for Goyims. <coughs> number 22 is one of the most powerful of all numbers it is often called the master builder. The 22 can turn the most ambitious of dreams into reality. It is potentially the most success of all numbers. It has many inspirational insights of the 11 combined with the practicality, methodological nature of the number four, its sum. JFK was assassinated on 1122. Um, that it has, okay, it, it talks about you can turn the powerful, most powerful of all numbers, okay, that you can turn most ambitions into reality. I will ask that you seek out some of the uh, preachers such as Doyle Osteen uh, and other prosperity preachers. That sounds a whole lot like what they're teaching. Number 33, a magical number. It's the perfect number multiplied by the master number 11. This number has much significance in religions of the world, as well as historical organizations such as Freemasons. Secret societies such as Skull and Bones also worship the number 33. Uh, you see a bonesman. Uh, number 33, or 39, is perfect three multiplied by the sacred 13. 39 is an anagram for 93. The literal number of magic itself by Crowley. That'd be Al Aleister Crowley. If you're not familiar with him, I suggest you look him up. 
The United Nations, located in New York, has 39 floors. Number 77, the sacred number. Uh, sacred number 7 multiplied by the master 11, the number of the biblical revenge of Lamont, and the children of Lamont. Are the alleged builders of the Temple of Atlantis and Lamont lived 777 years? In the United States, Washington, D.C., and much of the East Coast, is located on the 77th meridian, known as the American meridian. Multiples of numbers amplified the strength of the ritual and desire 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, etc. Numbers add, occultists add numbers individually except for 11. 11 always stays 11. Every number of the alphabet represents a corresponding number. You'll find that a lot in Judaism. The two charts for calculating the English language in, are found in the following. So, you know, if you take anything from this, all these numbers that I've read, these are not found in Christianity. Not a good thing anyway. It is simply numerology and the occult. Here's yet another website. Um, and on this particular website, it talks about, you know, there are mentions uh, like the Bible talks about three constellations, Orion, the bear, or the major, and the crooked serpent, most likely Draco and Job. Um, then in Amos, it mentions the Pleiades, uh, which is seven stars, uh, Mazareth, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's not this, I'm not saying that the stars, all this are not good things. They are. Uh, because the Bible says it's given to us for signs and seasons. For instance, we plant the garden. We plant according to the moon phase and the signs. Uh, let's do the same thing sitting fence posts or rock above the ground. But the thing is, they were given to us for signs and seasons to use. Uh, you know, it says we should keep use the stars to keep track of time and place to remind us of God's faithful covenant keep in nature. That doesn't mean we use them for predictions. And I also realize that you got like seven bowls, seven seals. That's just telling you the number of events. It could have been letters but for whatever reason he chose numbers and on this website we see you know here's numerology why is it so appealing and does it really work of course they come up to the same thing that you know it doesn't work and there's so many calendar models who are you going to go by they go by whoever happens to fit whatever agenda they're placing and if you look it up in the bible which I'm not a Jehovah Witness. I think this is Jehovah Witness side. Uh, I'm not saying that there's not things to, to do seasons and then to measure time, etc. But when you look up, if you ever wonder what to look up in the Bible, because you're not going to find numerology in the Bible. It wasn't called numerology back then. It was called divination. So, you know, you go to look it up, look up divination and I think you're going to really be surprised the most surprised that I think I am is just how many people are supposed to be promoting this uh, it just blows my mind and they're doing it under the Christian heading and it's not something that's Christian this next part, we're just going to go through and do a few things, you know, just click, click, click. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is Enochian magic. The law started with Enochian magic. Enochian magic, uh, I don't know what they're going to tell you now, but you will find that, if you'll notice this symbol, that is of King Solomon. Enochian magic 
was practiced by him. Uh, one thing that you're going to freak out on is um, right here. Now, there was two Enochs. There was the bad Enoch, and there was the good Enoch. Uh, and that's what basically it boils it down to. And then this dude here comes along, and that is the Lester Crowley. Some say Barbara Bush's dad. So, anyway, he perfected it. And he called up a dude named Lom. And, um, that would be something interesting. Most people don't know about that. So let's just look up Lom. You'll notice that there's a strange face. Looks a whole lot like, uh, what we call aliens. And what's really funny is here's a long research. What does it have? A pyramid. So, you know, you take it from there as to that kind of gives you an idea on that point. Finally, uh, before we wrap this up, I think we've all seen this picture at several places before. Um, and we've definitely seen our share of that image. It's, like I say, that's not Hebrew, not the original Hebrew. You see this practiced a whole lot. As a matter of fact, when you see these actors, actresses, singers, and they wear a little red string around the wrist, that shows that they're practicing Kabbalah. And I had a friend the other day tell somebody that he needed to read on this, that he needed to research it as he was feeling bad. And, you know, he's going, oh, man, you need to really search. Uh, it was called the Sephra. I don't even be pronouncing that wrong. But, you know, you see this on a lot of things. And, again, this was brought about by the bad Enoch. And it was feathered by um, King Solomon. And that's one reason he fell out of God's favor. Actually, that is the reason he fell out of God's favor. Um, this is a cult. I don't care if it's a mere reward. It is a cult. Unless they worship Christ, it is a cult. If they don't accept Christ, they end up going to a very bad place. Uh, not really worship Christ, they follow Christ. They gotta worship God. They have a God, trust me, they have a God. It's the wrong one. Um, and I'm sure they probably think that. That, by the way, is Jewish. So when your children are being taught bad things and wrong, this is where it's coming from. So, anyway, when you start hearing all this mysticism about numbers and numerology, and, yeah, there's signs in the heaven, but these are not sign saying that that's it. It's done. We're over. Um, so wake up and stop believing it. And if you want to believe it, big religion. Christianity is not open to that. Uh, that's just plain. Remember the mark of the beast in the eye or the hand? Well, isn't that funny? So anyway, that's it. Hope you got something out of it, learned something out of it. Peace.